Alrighty, let's talk a little bit about the effect of pH on the solubility of solid compounds. So if we have just sort of a generalized solid here, this Xa, it's going to dissolve, and when it dissolves, it's going to dissociate into its component pieces, where X is my cation, so it's some sort of metal ion, and A is my anion. Now, depending on where these ions kind of come from if i add an acid or i add a base to this system when it's at equilibrium that can have an impact on the solubility so for example if i was to add let's say a strong acid like hydrochloric acid then functionally i'm adding h plus ions right because it's a strong acid so it dissociates completely and uh so long as my anion here isn't chloride right <laughs> then that's not that chloride part's not going to have any impact but if we think about just the hydrogen part when i add the hydrogen to this the real question is is ha a weak or strong acid because that's going to determine whether or not adding an acid is going to have an impact if it is strong then there's not going to be any impact on this being this addition of hydrogen ions. Because when I add the hydrogen ions, if this is a strong acid, HA, it's gonna just fall apart anyway. And so this is gonna be what it is. If it's weak though, if it's a weak acid, then that's gonna functionally pull this ion out of solution. That's gonna decrease my concentration of my anion. So what would that do to the solubility? If I decrease this, if I think about Le Chatelier's principle, what would happen? I'm decreasing the concentration of my product. That's going to shift the reaction towards the products. It's going to shift it right. And if I shift the reaction right towards the products, that means that I'm getting more of this solid into solution. So by adding the acid here, if that HA is a weak acid, then that's going to increase the solubility of XA. So that's one way that if I wanted to get more in solution and I knew that this anion was coming from a weak acid, then this is one way that I could do that. Now we can do the same kind of thought process with a strong base. So let's take sodium hydroxide, which essentially means that we're adding hydroxide ions. So the real question then that we're asking is, is X hydroxide, whatever that metal hydroxide, is it going to be a weak or a strong base? And again, if it's strong, then we don't really care because if it's strong, it's gonna completely dissociate. So I'm still gonna have these cations left in solution. The hydroxide will just be hanging out. That'll just kind of be what it is. It'll just get more you know, basic, but that's not gonna have an impact on the solubility of that solid, which is really the name of the game in all of this. Now, again, if it's weak, so if I have a metal hydroxide that's weak, then when I add hydroxide, it's going to pull the X cation out, which is going to decrease that concentration of whatever metal cation that is. And that also is going to have the same impact. It's going to shift the reaction right to fill that hole. And um, functionally, that means that I've increased my solubility of my solid. So again, this would be handy information depending on these ions and what we know about the pH of ions in solution and what we know about weak and strong acids, then this is going to give us a way to potentially get more of this dissolved into solution. So this is just kind of one way to think about it. Now, if I have this information, this can also help me predict which is going to be more soluble. So I can answer questions that look like this. Which of these salts solubilities would be more impacted by the addition of an acid? So if I'm adding an acid to these things, then I'm essentially adding hydrogen ions. So silver chloride here, AgCl, this is the equilibrium that I'm looking at. If I was to add hydrogen ions, the question is, would HCl form? 
And there's no reason that there wouldn't be attraction between these. Opposite charges attract. But would they stick together? Would they chemically bond together? And we know that because hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, that it's not going to. It would immediately split apart. So even if these things are attracted to each other, there would be no reaction. And this would have no impact on the solubility of silver chloride. And of course, the hydrogen is not going to have any impact on the silver either way, right? Because they're both positively charged, so they're not going to want to interact with each other. Now let's think about our silver cyanide. If we add hydrogen ions to this guy, the question is going to be, would hydrogen cyanide form? So based on what we know about strong versus weak acids, we know that um, hydrogen cyanide is a weak acid. So yes, yes, this would form. And what would happen then in this equilibrium is that we'd be decreasing the concentration of cyanide that's in there, right? We're pulling this cyanide out of solution with the addition of that hydrogen. So it's forming this kind of side reaction. We're forming this hydrogen cyanide, which is going to cause more of this to shift to create more product to fill that hole, right? So it's going to shift right, which is an increase in solubility. Okay, so it's kind of combining together a number of different ideas. We're thinking about solubility, we're thinking about pH, what happens when I add an acid, what happens when I add a base, are they coming from weak acids and weak bases, and how all this can be impacted by these side reactions that can occur secondary to the main equilibrium.